What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Far Away Lands, Rise of Yokai. I got this last week and I've re-recorded it once or twice because like I really wanted to get a good feel for the game and I felt like the episodes that I recorded were not up to like the snuff and, and quality that I expect them to be. And, and so anyways, I know what I'm doing going into this one now. Far Away Lands, Rise of the Yokai is a city building, it's a 2D city building colony management game set in sort of like... I guess superstitious Japan, or, or in, I guess, Shinto Japan, uh, or like Edo. It's basically the samurai, but the game considers things like yokai and oni and all those sorts of things to be real. And so anyways, supernaturally infused medieval Japan. There we go. That's the sentence that I was looking for. That one right there. That's what we're going to title the video. So anyways, you're going to build a city and you have to protect it from invasions of yokai, oni, and all those kinds of things that really, really, really want to stab you in all of your squishy bits. And I say, hey, 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 demon. Hey, demon, have some respect. You don't stab me in my squishy bits. Bruh. So let's start the game on off and see how it goes. The bronze guardians that protected the mortal realm have grown dormant with their attentive gaze gone from the link to Yomi, the dark, unpleasant world. The cunning Itsunami sent demons... And other oh the game is running right now. Hold on, let's pause that. Had sent demons and other ungodly creatures on the plains of the mortals to quench her unruly wrath of being seen undead by her husband, Itsanagi. Several unlucky bamboo cutters were found dead and ripped to pieces without being eaten. Some who survived the attack say that they saw ugly red monsters armed with knives and bloodlust. The Emperor, Ashikawa Shoko, worried by these morbid creatures, has sent you to deal with the problem at hand and protect the local village. With you are the finest craftsmen and architects. Use them well to ensure the survival of the village. Done. Alright, so let's see what we've got here. The demo will last for two days. Good to know. Alright, so let's pause the game up. we got three guys. We've got Takiru Mashima, who is blind, which means that he's bad at ranged jobs, but he has an iron heart. So he'd probably be pretty good at actually fighting. We could have him be like a blind fire monk or like a blind spearman, dude. That'd sound pretty badass. Uh, what else we got going on here? We've got Masahiro Mabuchi, who is obese. It doesn't look that obese to me, but you know what? That's fine. And we have Karen Nobukuni who apparently has no skills whatsoever and is just like a person. All right, Karen. Well, have fun. You come over here, and you are going to dwell inside this house on this side. This is where you live now. You're going to be a builder. And so as you can see, she's been assigned to be a builder, and we can now tell her to build stuff. We have 155 wood, so I think it's not like the worst idea that's ever been pitched to maybe put down a new house so that our population stays nice and beefy. Put that down right there and what you'll see is that our builder will run off and take care of it. We can't assign people to do other stuff just in case we wanted to build multiple things. And I do think a woodcutter's camp is a really, really good idea for right there because it's close to the stockpile and it's close to a supply of trees. So if I assign another builder, they're going to sprint on over there. They're going to grab the gear from outside of the stockpile and then they're going to start using that gear that we just assigned in order to build the place up. It's going to take us just a minute to get it done and there's not really a whole lot of other tasks that we can play ourselves to while we wait so I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna speed up the game for just a moment so there you go our new house has been built that's increased our pop cap to 10 right there if you're wondering why the pop cap matters every single time that this gets down to the bottom you get a new villager that it generates with randomly generated a uh, skill zores so having 10 is better than having three especially if you wanted to see the rad ass battle that's going to come at the end of the game against just the hordes of drooling slavering ugly fanged onis you know what I mean all right, so that's been built right there. He's blind. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have him ble be a blind woodcutter for just a minute. We're gonna need all these trees to be cleared out so that we can get a little bit more equitable building space. Otherwise, life is going to be difficult. Uh, we've got Koji Shinojima who is apparently mystical and gets extra elemental damage. Well, for right now, go elementally damage some trees until I tell you to do otherwise. And what else can we build right now? We've got a miner's camp. We can do that pretty easily. Ore carriers, docks, all that kind of fun stuff. I think that food buildings are actually a really, really good place to start. Being able to generate some kind of vittles for ourselves might be a really, really good idea. So it looks like our food stock has been selected as rice for right now. I love rice, dude. Like, I make, like, one of my meals that I go through is I got turkey burgers and I got normal burger patties, dude. And then I just make jasmine rice. Nice and soft, nice and, you know, squishy and sticky. 
and then I just make like two hamburger patties, lay that over the top of the rice, hit it with a little bit of cheese, and it's like loco moco. You know, my family's Hawaiian. I love loco moco. And at the end of the day, it's basically loco moco, but missing some stuff. But like, I'm too lazy to do the other parts, but that that's my comfort meal right there. Dude, I eat that probably twice or three times a week. I don't know why, it just makes me feel good. Like, I know it's not the most difficult meal to prepare, like, culinary-wise, but, like, I can make it fast, and, like, for some reason, it just makes me feel at ease. Like, it makes me feel like life is gonna be okay. And I think that's kind of important to have those meals in life. Uh, we're gonna need that building right there, and then we're gonna need a water well that's, like, somewhere near it so that we can water our crops. So we'll put a well right there, too. So he should go through and build those two buildings. We got a farm and a well coming through. I'm going to need that tree to go down pretty soon. But honestly, I don't think they're going to be done with this for a while. Like, I, I think this is going to take some time over here. How are we doing on our villagers? We got another villager coming really, really soon. Can I fit in another woodcutter over here? Like, this woodcutter is hella far from everything, so it's going to take them, like, a hot minute to go through and, and get all that stuff. Yeah. Might not work out so great. Might not work out so great. We can customize all of our buildings, by the way, just in case you wanted to. I like to turn them all green because green is my favorite color. There's our farm. That's all ready to rock. This guy will go through, and he should get the well done next. Uh, we've got strong arms over here, more melee damage, and then we've got another obese guy. Okay, uh, let's see here. I absolutely love the graphics of the game, just like that foggy effect. I know I shouldn't admit this, because I'm like this game is everything that I'm against, and yet I'm playing it right now. I've been playing a lot of Genshin Impact, dude, and like I love the way that they portray like the highland areas with the mist like settling in in between the mountains and whatnot. Like it's such a gorgeous set of scenery, and it's so common with anything that's kind of portrayed in like Korea or like China or like Japan. Is they always have kind of like that those mountains with sort of the fog running across them with the large valleys. And and like the highlands and the lowlands, and I just love it. And Genshin Impact captured that really, really, really well. I'm playing that in my free time, even though I shouldn't be. I just, it's a shame it's such a good game. <laughs> it really is. Uh, so anyways, I love the scenery, is what I was trying to get to. It looks like they already got the bamboo stock down, which is great. That's going to give us a whole bunch of extra room on this side. Uh, you might be asking yourself what that thing is right there with that super creepy thing up over the top of it. It's our mine. This is the place where we're going to be mining at. We don't really have the workforce in order to do it right now, but we're going to need the workforce before too long. Uh, let's put in a field over here just to get this started so that we're producing some kind of food. We'll have one villager build that. Strong arms. Axe lover. So you have a faster woodcutting speed? Sounds good to me. Takiru, get out of there. You're also good at digging? Okay, well, you're going to be a chopper for right now. Go be a chopper for the moment. Uh, strong arms. Just get these trees done. And then you were blind, but you've got an iron heart. So you're probably going to be a physical warrior, all things considered. That's sort of what I want to assign them to do. Yeah, and we're starting to build up the people to do it. Maybe we start digging right now. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, we'll put a miner's camp in, like right there. And then we'll also put in an ore carrier, like right there. That's going to use up like some of our resources, but I feel like getting access to stone nice and early is a really, really good idea. Now, I don't remember if there's monsters down here. I think there are as we dig through some of the walls. And so we're going to want to keep an eye on that and just sort of watch out. Uh, I had another guy who was just like obese, right? Okay, guess what? You're now one of my new builders. So now we have two builders. You've got strong arms. Everybody else is doing stuff right now. Actually, no. You come be you come be a farmer, dude. You're a farmer now. This right here, we will plant rice seeds inside of there. Because our food is dropping off pretty fast at the moment. So we're going to need to get to like some level of replenishment before too long. They're going to come over here and start chopping that tree like really, really soon once they get done with these ones. So we'll focus on expanding our city out this way for the time being while we wait for this to get done. Uh, let's take a look here. We've got military buildings. So we can make an archery range. We can make a barracks. I think a barracks sounds like a really good idea. Unfortunately, we need that tree to be down and out of the way before it's going to be useful to us. So that's a bit of a bummer, but it takes time. I absolutely love the music right now. The music with like the, the shamisen and the, and the kodo, dude. Just like two of my favorite instruments. 
Just absolutely love the sound of both instruments. Like, it's always been something that... Those two instruments, so there's something about them. There's just something about them and the way that they're played that just, like, really, really works for me. I love the sound of it. All right. I need this tree to come down, like, right now. Y'all need to get on it. Like, I know you guys are out here trying to wood chop and, like, trying to hang out. But, like, if you guys don't knock down that tree right now, you and I are going to have very, very serious problems. It looks like our ore hauler is out of here, so that's good. And then we've got our miner's camp still on its way up. I would never walk through any gateway that has that thing on top of it. It looks so creepy, dude. It's so creepy. Like, I just, it looks like something that's from, like, Onimusha or something. Like, I don't like it. Like, it seems like something that would talk in, like, a high kabuki voice and, like, sell you items. But it's definitely using, like, the souls that you're giving it to get up to no good. That's what it feels like to me. Another villager. Oh, no, that guy's terrible. All right, he's a miner. Congratulations, you live in the mine now. And Karen. She's still my builder. Hey, they got the tree down. Nice, that means we can continue. So I wanted to have a barracks. Faux show. So we'll put in a barracks right there. We should see... After they get these two down, I'm pretty sure they're going to go after these ones over here because they're technically closer, which will be good because I need to build new farms over here so we can produce enough food. So the faster they get that tree down right there, the happier a camper Splatty will be. However, they do seem to be very inherently stoked about that tree right there, so who knows. Builder, what are you doing right now? You're going to grab stuff from the stockpile? So proud of you. Look at you over here doing your job the way it's supposed to be done. Uh, am I all out of villagers? No, I get two more. Nice. Two moss villagers. That'll be good. There you go. Dig that on out of there. Hopefully a giant horde of monsters doesn't exist behind that. This might be a terrible idea. You stop. Don't don't do that. Yeah, don't do don't do what you're doing until I have warriors actually. Let me think about this for a second. It's almost our first night. We're digging around beneath the surface of the earth in like a weird and sketchy way. This guy's an agriculturist and he's skinny dude. That's one of the best perks. Skinny's amazing. Yeah, look, our axe guy's coming over here now. That'll be good. Once I get that tree down, I'll put a second farm right there, and we'll have the agriculturists come work on this area. We have, like, a long queue of people right now that aren't really doing a whole lot, but trust me, they're going to do stuff soon. I'm going to make this guy into a spearman. Yeah, the Naginata is one of my favorite weapons in lore and history, so we'll take that. We'll take one spearman over here, and he will be the blind spearman that defends our village. I'm going to turn this guy over here into a swordsman, too. I just want to have, like, a couple of guys ready to rock in case this doesn't go the way that I think it's going to go. We can have archers or we can have a pagoda. Yeah, let's do a pagoda, man. That sounds rad as hell. I definitely want, like, a big Shinto pagoda that we can, like, meditate next to. And then when the enemy's trying to creep through the bushes, we open, like, one eye and raise our eyebrow. And then we're like, shee, 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 shee. And it goes to a black screen, and there's just a bunch of white flashes. And then the entire forest slides sideways. And then the, then the you know, the monsters, like the Oni or whatever in the bushes, are like, nani? And then there's like, ah! And then, like, he slides in half, and the blood's like, Psss. That's functionally one of the coolest ways that you can kill somebody in animated medium. Like, black... White flashes, and then it fades back in, and then all of a sudden blood just goes out of the side of somebody's neck. That's like one of the coolest ways you can kill somebody in cartoons. Facts. Once this pagoda's up, too, we can get that guy that has that elemental boost. Who had the elemental boost? Somebody had, like, elemental abilities. I recall somebody had, like, elemental abilities. If somebody's got, oh, here's our two little soldiers. So we got our swordsman, and look, he runs like a samurai. And then we got, like, our little spearman right there who's walking with his back all straight, just being like, yeah. Oh, this guy's mystical. Okay. Would you like to be a, oh, he can heal allied units? He gets elemental damage, though, not elemental healing. Yeah, make him into a fire monk. That sounds rad as hell. All right, we have soldiers now, so you, you dig that hole out right there. Yeah, go do that right there. I want to see what's behind it. Let's find out. I'm going to position some of my warriors down in here, too. That way we can kind of, like, protect the front, just in case it gets gnarly down there. Did they get that tree on the left? Is that what that sound effect was? Eh, they've almost got it. They're getting there. Maybe someday. 
Uh, there's my soldier. Oh, that was him finishing off the wall down there. Okay. Uh, yeah, go gather up some stone. We don't have a whole lot of it, and we could definitely use more. So you are... Are you, like, not a miner anymore? I feel like sometimes I'm unassigning him to be a miner on accident. Looks like he'll just go out and do it automatically. So he's going to stack up 45 ores, and then we have a runner who's going to come over here, grab it, and take it back to the stockpile. Haven't assigned a runner yet. I probably should. Do I have anybody that's, like, good at that? Like, where's my runner at? Need somebody with, like, bad stats to be my runner. You're simple. I mean, that works for me. Congrats, you're now my runner. I need more houses, too, so I can keep my population moving. Otherwise, we're going to end up in a situation where our population does not get larger. Also, this game has a world map. Like, later on, it's planned that there's going to be cities all over the place, and you'll be doing, like, diplomacy or something. Like, I don't know, dude. I don't know if it's going to be, like, Kingdom New Lands, where if you win here, you go to other places, or if it's going to end up being, like, a game where you're going to establish trade with other cities and, like, boons and get special units, you know, from, like, up in Russia or get, like, special help from, like, Imperial China. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to wait and see. You can build exploration ships or something though later on. Uh, we can't do it right now, but might be something worth keeping an eye on. Definitely some depth here in case you were worried about that. I'll probably plop another house in right there. That sounds okay to me. Got my fire monk right here. Nice. I'll just put him along the edge of the village. He can just hang out over there. And he can just, like, meditate. And he'll have, like, those big old beads on, like Akuma has. You know what I mean? And then when somebody comes along, he's going to strike, like, that horse stance. And the ground's going to crack underneath his feet. Stones are going to start levitating while electricity fires in between them, Dragon Ball Z style. That's what, that's what, I, imagine, that's what I imagine monks do. <laughs> Whenever threatened, they just unleash their monk magic. I got all my soldiers down here, but I don't know if I need them to be down here. I'll bring them up here. They can keep watch with the monk. How good is the monk? His armor isn't that great. He's got a lot less HP, too. Maybe he hangs out in the background and, like, casts or something. Maybe he's just, like, a firebender. Shoots flamethrowers or something at the enemy while he relaxes. Our food is kind of recovering. Like, it's sort of doing okay. If my wood choppers come all the way out here to this bamboo, I'm going to be very upset with them. Uh, that's the gateway from which we're going to be attacked at some point. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I've been told that it's definitely a thing that can happen. I don't know if we can build a... Oh, we can make a blacksmith. Nice. I should probably do that then to increase the proclivities and size of my army. Yeah, go ahead and make a blacksmith. We've got the extra stuff. The runner, I don't think, has, like, run at all just yet. Probably assign another miner down here, too, to make it go a little faster. Yeah, sure. Erica. Congratulations, you're a miner now. Come down and get this copper over here so that, like, we can start turning it into something a little bit more, like, coherent. So he gathers about 15 a run. Ah, we finally got the full 45. I wonder if it's going to put like a little graphic on the... It does. It actually fills up with stones. What would be even cooler is if it fills up with whatever it is she takes back. So if she takes copper, it would be like kind of a yellowish orange. She takes iron back, it's kind of red. That would be like a really cool detail that I'm kind of stoked about. I also haven't built like an archery range yet. But then again, I don't know exactly what's in my stockpile at the moment. Looks like I got a couple of bows left. So if I really wanted to... Oh, I have 40 copper. That's pretty rad, so I can make some copper armor for some more spearmen, maybe? Is that who used the copper armor? I don't recall. Let me take you over here. Oh, leather. Yeah, so the spearman uses a spear and copper armor. I assume that the spear is probably just going to get made... I don't know how the spear is actually going to get made. I'm not super sure. And they still have not got that tree down. I need that tree down. Something fierce. Our food is at like an equilibrium right now. With population growth, though, it's not going to stay that way. New villager has joined us and is an ocean lover. So she's actually good at fishing, which is good. Okay. I haven't played around with the fishing at all, but we will. And with the blacksmith, we probably have to assign somebody to work here. What can we craft and how hard is it? So with the spear, we just need stone and wood. Okay. Yeah, take the new person. Put her on the blacksmith. 
There you go. I don't know how long these are going to take, but do that and three armors. Perfect. So three armors and three spears, and then we'll have like a full contingency of spearmen like ready to go. I don't know if it's a better idea to go with bowmen or not at this point. I, I honestly haven't made up my mind, but I feel like having a strong retinue of spearmen to hold the front line before we have archers and whatnot. Like maybe we put a tower like right here, and then we have the archers in the tower, and we have the spearmen holding them back on that side. Sounds pretty good to me. A, the tree is down. Nice. So now we can take this back over here. We can put in a new farm. And then my agriculturist can finally become a farmer. And we'll have her grow like soy or something over there. That'll be good. I don't see any blacksmithing happening. Is that them? Maybe they were going to pick up items, and now I just reset it. She still has a backpack on, so she's carrying the items with her. Maybe she'll auto-fill it in. Hey, we got more coming in this way, too. And they're grabbing the copper. Nice. Okay, so if nothing else, we are going to have just an absolute swath uh, of spearmen, okay? Oh, nice. The crafting's happening. Look at that pixel art right there. I love it. And it actually goes pretty fast. I was worried that it was going to take a long time to get some of this stuff done, but it doesn't. Looks pretty good. Uh, you stay over here since you don't have a job. I just want you to hang out next to, like, the main stockpile and just sort of, like, make an appearance. Oh, it's kind of a bummer. So one thing I would do in order to streamline the game is maybe have a designated hauler class. So, like, I find that a lot of the time that gets wasted in this game is wasted because the people doing the job also have to do all the hauling for the job. One thing I would like to see in later versions of the game is I would like to see a job that is just a hauler. Their job is to go, and, like, so when this guy gets done blacksmithing, he fills up the weapon racks over here. The, rep the weapon racks would be empty, and he fills them up. And then when it gets full, a hauler comes over, grabs the stuff, and takes it back to the stockpile. Same thing with the wood choppery over here. Like, this little wood pile would slowly fill up, and haulers would take care of it. Uh, I've noticed that a lot of people spend, like, an inordinate amount of time just running things to and fro from the stockpile. It makes the stockpile too useful in its placement. It makes the stockpile too important and too far away most of the time because the game is in 2D. So you can't really, you don't get to choose where the stockpile goes either uh, when you play the game. And so anyways, having haulers would alleviate that and make it a little bit easier. It'd make it so it doesn't matter how far away from the stockpile you build some of the buildings. Because the haulers are going to take place, or are going to take care of it anyways, and there's not going to be any real... There's not going to be any real fear of scarecrows. That's weird. Oh, doesn't like farming. we got a lot of bookworms around here. Lots of fishers, too. Apparently, they definitely all want to be fishermen. Spears are almost done. And then I'd like to see an archery range right here, maybe. And then I'd like to see an arrow tower right there. And then you guys push out a little bit further. How's our mining going? Oh, they already took out the stone. Nice. Okay. Population's getting beefier, but we haven't gotten the first yields from our new farm yet. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Still got 74 copper left. They've got nothing stored up, so we're not going to get a haul for a while. That's okay, though. We only have one more person due. Oh, he just brought one in, so that might be okay. Probably get like eight or nine out of that. And both of these guys now are farmers that are going at a much higher rate, so I think we're going to recover just fine with our food. I hope. I don't know that for certain, but it looks so. We got five? Oh, I thought that gave you eight or six or something like that. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, just continue planting. I'll make another set of farmers over here if I really, really have to. We are farmers. Bump, 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 bump. Yeah, make that armor, please. That armor needs to get made, like, now. We don't have a whole lot of time left in the day at the moment. I don't know if we're going to be able to get our archers trained. Looks like they're mostly still pushing out to the right. I guess that still must be closer than going all the way over here. There's water on the left-hand side, by the way. You don't have to defend this side. At least not until they put in, like, water demons and water spirits and stuff like that. But you only have to defend the right side, so. Tower's almost done. There we go. 
and then he'll go back and get the archery done. We got anybody that's got warrior stats over here? Ocean loving survivalist. A chance to evade attacks. That sounds like somebody who could be a spearman to me. Sounds like somebody that could be a spearman to moi. Alright, so this is more or less what I managed to get put together before the end of the game here. Like, we've got an archer that can be up in the tower, which is pretty cool. Crossbowmen, in fact. So crossbows are pretty gnarly. Like, that's a good little piece of equipment to have. And then we've also got a longbowman in training right now. So we've got three spearmen, we've got a swordsman, we've got a flame monk. Who's going to be shooting fireballs, but you know, taking care of business. And then, like, we're gonna have we're gonna have archers as well, kind of firing over the top of them. Hopefully, I've prepared well enough to hold back the yokai, but there's no way to know. There's really just no way to know until the attack gets here. I do have more stuff going on over here. I should probably make like another house or something. We seem to be doing okay on food. Yeah, I'll build another house so that our population keeps growing. But I'm pretty sure the attack is coming like right now. Can you also go up in the tower? How many archers can I have in the tower? Oh, it looks like several archers can be up in the tower. We only have, like, seven soldiers. We, we don't have, like, a massive army out here, like, prepped, ready to rock to fight whatever demonic incursion is coming. But it's 7 o'clock at night, and, you know, we're hoping for the best. We're hoping for the best. I think even if the house gets built, they're not going to be ready. Yeah, they're not going to be ready to, like, give us another, like, spearman or anything by the time it gets here, so... No big worry or harm or foul there. The game should end in about four hours. They only gave us access to like the first two days of the game for promotional purposes. So let's see what's going on here. Thus far, no attacks. I thought there would be an attack. But maybe it happens at like midnight. Who knows? We have a new villager. That might give me time to actually... What do you do? You have strong arms? Good. Congratulations. You're now a spearman. Come apply those Come apply those strong arms to the very, very noble pursuit of stabbery. Hey, we're under attack. Good. I, w I just wanted to see what the enemies looked like before we went any further with the game. Like, I know that we were going to have, like, a limited demo or whatever, but we got four spearmen over here. Good. I was waiting for it to happen, dude. I was waiting for it to happen. Oh, you weren't kidding. Look at them. They're coming, they got meat cleavers? What are those right there? Oof, okay. Alright, we're making friends out here. We're making uh, super scary paranormal friends. Uh, you come over here and be a spearman about as soon as possible. Who knows if we're going to have the oomph to withstand this hit. I mean, I've got a little army right here. Like, I really feel like I did a great job at making like an awesome little army. That's I think I did a good job. That's just me personally. I think I did good. But, you know, people are free to disagree, I guess. Maybe they thought that I had to, like, do this. Oh, my God, there's so many. Okay, maybe I didn't do a good job. Maybe I did a really bad job. Maybe we're supposed to die at the end of the second day. Maybe we're maybe we're not supposed to survive this. Oh, no, dude, that last spearman isn't going to come in time. Oh, it feels bad. Fire Monk, Fire Monk, you're too far back. I want you over here, Fiery Monk. Oh, they stopped. Nice. There's not as many now. We might be okay. God only knows how much HP these things have. I've got like a little army though. Maybe it'll be good enough. Is this guy going to be done in time? I need this guy to come over here. Yeah, you. You, come over here. Come be, come be a part of something. Come assist in the great and noble venture of war. Woodchopper, you might not want to be right there, man. That might not be the place to be at the moment. That might be a mistake, cousin. You might want to fall back a bit. Just trying to help, dude. Whoa, the archers shoot from so far away. Oh! Get wrecked! Oh my god, I'm so happy we have a firebender. Dude, they might not even, like, get here. <laughs> Onwards, my warriors. Onwards. To glorious battle. Oh, dude, we're a bunch of gods. They're not going to hurt me. I think we're good here. I mean, we might lose a couple of swordsmen and whatnot, but, like, they seem to be doing a pretty, pretty good job on their own without any backup. All right, you guys swap out. Spearman, you're in.
Nice, dude. We survived our first attack. Well, this is far away lands. I hope you guys liked it. I had a lot of fun with this. I'm excited to see what the final iteration looks like. Uh, if you wanted to get the demo for yourself, I'll have a link for you down below. Thank you for hanging out with me. I will see you all next time. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today we had uh, Far Away Lands. Tomorrow we'll have something new, God willing. See y'all later. Bye, everybody.